In the mid-2000s, people were obsessed with super sport motorcycles. They wanted them and boy did they buy them in spades, typically on credit. But it does beg the question, why the hell were these bikes so popular for street riding when they're clearly designed to be used on a racetrack? You look at this thing and you say, yeah, you're supposed to be full tuck and attacking corners. However, much like people love to use race spec bicycles to poodle around their local park, people love the idea of having a race derived machine for the street. In today's video, we're going to explore why people ride 600cc motorcycles on the street, why it kind of sucks to ride a 600cc bike on the street, why people don't care about that, and how to ride a 600 if you're going to do it anyways. Today's video is proudly supported by Voom Insurance. I'll tell you more about them later in the show. Let's get started. So why do people ride 600s in the first place? Well, for a lot of people, it's just about the way that they look. Something like a naked bike or a smaller bike just isn't gonna do it for people. And the way a motorcycle looks, it has to elicit that look back factor. You know, you have to get off the bike, look back at it and say, yeah, that's my motorcycle. And for a lot of people, the look of a 600 absolutely does it for them. The second big reason is simply the sound. This thing has a 600cc or 599cc, if you wanna be pedantic, engine that makes a ridiculous amount of top end power, revs all the way to 17,000 RPM. And that's just simply extremely exciting for most people. Simply put as well, a 600 is most people's idea of a sport bike. The fully fared look, everything about it kind of screams the crotch rockets you saw when you were a kid. And finally, they go fast. I know that's a simple monkey brained way of putting it, but 600s go fast and people like going fast. That's an activity I participated with in myself when I was a street squid on my Daytona 675. But the thing about these bikes is that they don't really come alive until you get them on the track. And the vast majority of people ride these around on the street and will never experience what these bikes can truly do. There's no getting around it either. A 600 simply doesn't have a lot of low end torque. Now you might say that's not a problem, Yam. I'm just gonna be screaming at 15,000 RPM all the time. To be honest, you're gonna be going really fast if you're doing that on these bikes too. The name of the game when it comes to street riding is low down torque. It's why pokey parallel twins have become so popular in the last five to 10 years on the street. A 600 is just an old school style engine that requires a lot of revs to be kept in the power band. And while some riders may really enjoy that, most people aren't trying to get a speeding ticket every time they go ride. Related to that lack of low down torque is a really peaky power band on 600s. As I said, you have to really keep the revs up on these machines to make their power. And something like the R6 requires a lot of revs to really make the power. Now there are some 600s that are better at this than others. Something like the Kawasaki ZX6 with that 636cc cheater engine is going to allow yourself a little bit more ample mid-range torque. You can also size up to something like a Jixxer 750 or even a 1000 if you're truly the squiddliest of squids. But a 600 specifically, like a CBR 600RR or a Yamaha R6, just has a really peaky power band that isn't really suitable for street riding in my opinion. One thing that not a lot of people mention about a 600 is how stiff the chassis is. People talk a lot about how the suspension is stiff and that's usually stuff you can dial out, but there's something you just can't fix on a 600 and that's how stiff the chassis is. Now on a racetrack, that's fantastic because you get the thing leaned over and it holds a line beautifully. But on the street, every pothole, every undulation, every bump in the road, you're really gonna be transmitted into your body and there's not really a whole lot you can do about that. The same reasons that make a 600 super exciting to ride are the reasons that they kind of suck to ride on the street. Now, I firmly believe that dailying a 600 is a little bit silly. I think having a 600 or a race replica in your garage should be an accessory as part of a larger multi-bike garage. And that's the great thing about motorcycles. They're relatively cheap and you can afford several of them in your garage. Now, if you wanna save even more money, I have a special tip for you if you do own multiple bikes. Now, let's be honest with ourselves, guys. Some of us don't ride as much as we'd like to. We snap up some silly bikes on Craigslist and then they end up sitting in a garage for a whole long time because guess what? You've only got the one butt you can put in a saddle at one time. So why are we paying to insure our motorcycles fully when they're just sitting there not being used? Unless maybe you're a Harley rider and the bike's just gonna lay itself down while it's in the garage. I'm not sure, but that's where Voom Insurance can come in. Voom is a pay per mile insurance company that's sure to save you a bunch of money if you own multiple bikes or you just don't ride as much as you'd like to. 
You can save up to 60% versus traditional insurance with policies as low as 50 bucks per year. And the best part, there's no tracking hardware or software required. All you have to do is take a photo of your odometer and submit it to them. If you're a seasonal rider, a multiple bike owner, or you just don't rack up that many miles, Voom could be a great cost saving solution for you. Voom is only available in these current states. Arizona, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Missouri, Texas, and Tennessee. The riding season is just around the corner, so why don't you start the season off with a big savings on your insurance? Maybe you could get yourself that exhaust you've been eyeing. Click the link in my description down below or in the pinned comment to get yourself a free quote. If you're a rider that lives in a colder state, you own multiple bikes, or you just don't get out and ride as much as you used to, Voom could be a great option for you. You're probably overpaying on your traditional insurance, so click the link down below and get a free quote to see if paper mile insurance is right for you with Voom. Now, let's keep talking about 600cc bikes. So if 600s are so awful for the street, why do people keep riding them? Well. It's simple. They have a lot of allure. They have a lot of sex appeal and people will put up with a lot of crap for the things that they love. And boy, let me tell you, people love stuff like the R6 and other 600 class bikes. And I get it. I was young once too. I was once a 22 year old with the Daytona 675 and I loved the thing. I didn't care how uncomfortable it was, how silly it was, how goofy it was to be rolling around on the street with something like that. I loved the bike so much that I was willing to put up with all of the silliness that came with owning it. And I know a lot of you out there fit in that category too, but to be honest, the point that I'm at in my life today, 600s are reserved for track days or for short sprints and weekend rides. I wouldn't be dailying one. Let's talk about what you can do to modify a 600 and yourself so that you can daily the bike. The first mod I recommend making to your 600 to make it more dailyable is to get a tank bag or a tail bag. These are gonna be awesome because they reduce the load on your back from a backpack and allows you to carry more stuff on your bike without it looking too intrusive. This is something you can easily take on and off the bike too. So if you wanna go out to bike night, keep the thing nice and fresh looking. You don't need to show up with the tank bag. You're not installing hard luggage onto your R6. Don't worry about it. Speaking of backpacks, the next big advice I can give you is probably just avoid wearing a backpack in general riding a 600. It can be done and I've done it in the past too, especially if you have a backpack with a central locking mechanism here, it reduces the load on your back. But to be honest, if you're gonna be dailying a 600, getting a tank bag or tail bag is gonna be way more comfortable than a backpack. So just avoid the backpack in general. The next mod to make your 600 more dailyable is actually twofold. You should get yourself a nice set of tank grips and then use them with the correct technique by squeezing the gas tank and lightening the load on your hands. If you ride these motorcycles in a lazy way by not squeezing the tank, you're putting all of your weight into the bars over here, right? So once you have all the weight going to the bars, you're actually putting stress on your shoulders and your backs and it's going to be quite uncomfortable to ride this motorcycle. However, if you squeeze the tank and you use your core and you lighten your load on the hands over here, it becomes much more comfortable. So make sure that you're a little bit more fit, a little bit more in shape, and you should be able to ride these bikes, no problem. All right, these next two mods are truly old man mods, but hear me out, I think a seat cover is an awesome option to daily your 600. Why is that? As we mentioned, these bikes are very stiff. They have a race derived chassis. The subframe is pretty uncompromising, bolted right directly to it. And these seats were not designed for you to be on them for a very long time. You're designed to go on track for 30 minutes and then get off the thing. So if you get a more comfortable seat or a seat cover, that's gonna massively improve your daily riding on your 600. The next mod is a really easy one. I highly recommend you size up the rear sprocket a couple teeth. Why would you wanna do that? Well, first of all, you're gonna get better acceleration and torque out of the motor when you do that. Now, unless you're really a highway racer warrior and you wanna get 150 plus miles per hour on your 600 on the street, which is pretty silly, uh, I highly recommend you get a bigger set of sprockets in the rear or a smaller front sprocket. So my suggestion is go up two teeth in the rear or go down one tooth in the front and you're gonna get a motorcycle that's gonna be much more peppy on the acceleration and feel much more torquey for riding around town. And the last daily mod I'd recommend for these 600 style bikes would be a set of clip-on risers. Now, what are these gonna do? These are actually gonna stick out from the same point that the clip-on stick out over here, but they'll move it up maybe 15 to 25 millimeters up a little bit. Now, you might not think that makes a big difference, but increasing this clip-on bar up here higher a little bit is gonna be much more comfortable to ride the bike around because you're not gonna be leaned over as far. You're gonna be a little bit more upright and it'll allow you to ride this bike for a very long period of time. 
Doing all of these mods will transform your 600 from a race-ready track machine to an actually pretty decent street bike if you follow all those steps. Although in my opinion, you should probably still keep this bike as a weekend toy or a track day toy. Don't ruin the nature of the 600 by turning it into some FZ6 wannabe. But let's wrap up this video. So what do you think? Do you daily a 600cc motorcycle or do you relegate these like I do for your multiple bike garage and kind of a weekday track day toy type of thing? Let me know down in the comments below if you've done any mods to your 600 to make them more dailyable or if you do just keep it as a track toy. Big shout out to Voom Insurance for supporting today's video. Be sure to click that link down below and get yourself a free quote and see if you can save on a pay per mile basis. And remember, this R6 we're featuring in today's video is actually a giveaway motorcycle. Cycle. Check out shop.yaminoob.co. Every dollar you spend over there is an entry to win this fantastic R6. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Now, just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, we got here skateboarding Yosemite Yam. Best thing you're going to want to do, click on the video, watch Yammy Noob. Now, I can't promise you there's going to be any more skateboarding in that video because that's one of them Gen Z TikToker things to do. But your old Yosemite Yam here, he's been known to do from time to time. Click the video. Do it.